So you focus on national security, but then like this week you were writing about the writer strike and the actor strike and and the move toward using AI in the film industry. Do you do you want to is is there like one type of story or or one subject that you'd rather focus on or do you like mixing it up having a variety? I love doing all kinds of different things. You're learning mm -hmm. different stuff all the time. You're not becoming stagnant. You uh and you can help make a difference depending on whatever the issue is. Like the labor ferment that's happening right now opens up all kinds of possibilities in terms of what they call in journalism impact, which really just means like having any effect on anything. And so in the conditions, the macroeconomic conditions that we find ourselves where employment is quite high, I mean, you know, relatively speaking, um, uh, you know, maybe wages aren't particularly high, but they're higher than they were in the past. And what's called um, uh, labor market tightness, we're in a hot labor market, meaning workers have uh, choices. They can go and work somewhere else if they don't want to work at one place. They can unionize and risk getting fired and still end up going somewhere else to find work. Under those conditions, it becomes much more important to have um, reporting that informs the public of um, you know what these corporations are doing to crush labor um, and 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 the union efforts and so on and so forth. Uh, it's much more possibility for for making a difference than even just two or three years ago. So I'm really responding to like where the possibilities are to try to to try to you know make make some sort of a impact i hear interviews with writers and journalists like yourself all the time and people people who are actively writing pieces for various publications and and normally it's just them talking about the latest thing that they wrote and and i want everyone to know that there are links in the description of this podcast so you can check out ken's work and and you can follow him online i'm sure everyone watching knows who you are though but what i want to know is what motivated you like, I don't know, in life or in your career to go into this line of work? Like, is there a specific role model or, or someone who inspired you? Maybe it's someone, you know, personally, or maybe like an iconic figure. Um, I was just always really liked writing. And, um, when I graduated college, I graduated right in the middle of the 2009 crash. Mm. So there were like no jobs. And as a consequence of that, I was working as a waiter, uh, for a couple of years in that, um, Kind of in a way, it was a blessing because it freed up my time to be able to think about other things. If I had gotten in the rat race of some sort of you know white collar corporate job, I would probably would have been so busy with that that I don't know that I would have had time to formulate political attitudes on things and 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 um, think about what other uh, stuff that I could be working on. So I spent my free time, um, frankly, kind of angry about the way the country was being run, and you know I um, paid close attention to um, it was Occupy Wall Street at the time. I thought they made a lot of good points. And, um, you know, it was pretty <laughs> sincere, frankly, sort of corny even just thinking like, oh, I got to do something and make a difference here. <laughs> like everything is so bad. Like, what can I do? So I like writing and I, I initially wanted to be a, a fiction writer, but yeah. um, just seeing the political environment and it felt sort of selfish. Um, I'm only speaking for myself here. They're great fiction writers. I appreciate But for myself, I thought, well, what's the point of writing this kind of fiction? I should do something with this political disaster in which we find ourselves and so i thought well how would that what would that look like and i thought oh well journalism is writing but that's about um political matters and it's some way that you can try to inform people and so that was pretty much it that sounds so sincere i i really it appreciate was that heartbreakingly sincere yeah <laughs> very naive um and and one thing that's come up a lot during these interviews that I'm increasingly focused on just personally is this term media activism. I, I wonder what that term means to you. And should everyone actively be making a shift toward a degree of activism in their work? Um, well, like I said before, I'm a firm believer in that if the political ideology that you espouse is one that corresponds with the truth and and is a good idea, then the truth will advance that cause. So you don't have to try to advance a specific cause. And and I, I also think that if you just try to, you know, dispassionately put out the information that you're able to dig up and find, um, people are more apt to consider it than if you kind of very overtly and heavy handedly brand it like, like, here's this ideology or here. I'm, I really don't like all the isms, all the obsession. You'll notice I never say I'm a socialist. I never say I'm uh, Leninist or like what, whatever it is. Like, I'm not saying I'm either one of the, cause I don't want to, that slams the door shut because people, f it, it's a quick way to get people to disengage. And so it's like, um, I don't really deal in any of that stuff and I don't try to advance any of those things. I really trust that if you find the information, people will come 
to um, conclusions that are amenable to uh, any sort of belief system you have if you care about the truth. So do you actively try to change minds or are you putting the information out there and I'm, letting people do what they want? I want to put the information out there and let people do what they want. Now that said, I'm not putting out random information. You right. know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm looking at what I really like to try to do is I think, what are the powerful people not want out there? No isms. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the Democrats. I'm not talking about the Republicans. I'm not talking about what are the, you know, whatever. It's just, what are the people that, with power in the society? What do they really not want? people to be talking about and what have they gone to great lengths there's this beautiful i study literature in college there's a beautiful line by um the poet um J uh, john milton he says they who put out the people's eyes reproach them of their blindness you mm -hmm. have elites complaining that people aren't more you know why don't they do this why they're why don't they do why don't they care about foreign blah 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 it's like because you guys have systematically pushed them outside of the discussion and now you just you see that when it's like um, Biden versus Trump. It's like, why are you lazy fucks going out and voting against this uh, demagogue or whatever? It's like because you have spent 40 years disempowering people and making it so that they watch TV instead. I enjoy TV. I'm not anti-TV. I'm sure. just saying yeah, like, yeah. they want you to look at the bread and circus. And then they go, whoa, whoa, hold on. We're in trouble now. Can you come back and care about all this stuff? So to me, it's like what kind of information can you put in front of audiences um, that helps them to – become a part of the fight and become a part of the discussion and make it so that it's not just rich and powerful people that, that are uh, uh, not just deciding things, but even just a part of the discourse. You know, I, I wonder just in terms of changing minds or, or shifting opinions, is there any one person who can instantly change your views on something like, like you think you've got it figured out, whatever, whatever the topic may be, you think your stance is set and then somebody has an alternate take. Does that make you, reconsider like is there somebody out there for you like that it's less about a person i try to be open to that from anyone mm -hmm. um because i often find so much wisdom in people that you're told that you shouldn't listen to and mm -hmm. i don't mean necessarily like uh anybody that's publicly known but i'll give you an example um i asked my friend because uh uh he he works with a lot of like working class people that that are familiar with the he knows people in the ups and so i was curious about the ups contract that that got agreed to and i asked him i said so what are the ups people saying i want to know what a regular guy whose name nobody would ever recognize thinks because they'll have insight that that none of the professors and they're economists that i really appreciate and i love and i learn a lot from but they're not going to know what a everyday person is going to think about something because they're a professor at a university you know so um, to me, it's less about an individual that you really listen to. It's more about, like I said before, it's an ecosystem. You want to listen to all the different things to to get a full picture of what it is. Because once you start listening to one person, you're really biasing your view. No matter how wonderful that person is, um, you're 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 really um, tethering yourself to just um, one specific one one pair of eyes, which I which I think is a mistake. You know, it sounds to me like there's a lot of positive aspects to what you do, like like more positive than negative but is there any one thing that you wish was improved or or better or easier about what you do um do you mean the craft of journalism or do you mean the political situation how do you mean exactly yeah like journalism like when it comes to the industry it's been around forever right uh, but you know is there anything like in terms of um maybe platform or reaching an audience or gaining information. Is there anything that you think not, not necessarily something negative, but just something that could, could always be better. Are you saying me or other reporters? Yeah. You like your point of view. And I, I mean, unless you want to just do a commentary well, that's on part the of, entire. No, no, no. So that's part of why I started doing, I've started doing TikToks and I've started doing mm. um, Instagram videos and YouTube videos. I mean, I just do one video and I drop them into each of the platforms. And by the way, if anyone's watching, please subscribe to my uh, TikTok um, and YouTube. Uh, that helps me quite a lot. And the reason that I'm doing that is not because I have any particular charisma. I'm not a screen guy. I'm just not. You know, I used to work at the Young Turks. There are people there that have, what do they call it, riz? They've got the on-screen yeah. riz effect. I don't have that. But that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I really, like I was saying a moment ago, the UPS guy, that's who I want to reach. And I realized, yeah. you know, I enjoy Twitter quite a lot. I'm not saying I don't, but that's a very specific like media class and type of person that uses that platform. And I thought to myself and I, you know, I have a lot of fun on there and I'm never going to not use it, but it's kind of like, um, you know, I really want to write for 
ordinary people. And so where are they? And so I just went online and started reading about what platforms people congregate around. And it's these video platforms. So um, one thing I'd really like to improve on myself is just broaden the audience that's able to take this information and, and use it however they see fit. And so I've started doing this video stuff because of that, which I'm, I don't have very much facility at. Hopefully I get better at, but it is fun to just see the comments that people give you in the um, videos. You can really see it's a completely different audience than, than um, what you'd find on, on Twitter. And I think a much more representative one of the country. I, I think your videos are great. And, they, and then it, it's since you've been doing them, it's how I find the article. It's, um, you know, I subscribe to a bunch of newsletters, so I'm constantly like looking at my inbox going, where do I start? And, but if I'm on Instagram procrastinating and I see your video, boom, I go right to the article. Like, and so, I mean, you know, it's effective. But speaking about Twitter, you had a tweet today that last I checked, it was up around 40,000 likes. 